Hey everybody, Pete Meyer, Motor Age Magazine, here with the third edition of Driveway Diagnostics. In today's edition, we tackle the only problem left, that's a P0455 EVAP emissions code. Let's get to it. Hey, thanks for watching. You know, if you haven't seen the other two parts to this series, you can do so by looking at these links over here. They'll take you to the videos and then you can catch up to where we are today. Uh, very basically, uh, was an initial diagnostic process on the first video. The second video, we focused on finding and isolating the cause of the misfire in the number two cylinder. Now we have only one problem left to go after. That's a P0455 evaporative emission system code. Now, when you're diagnosing a misfire code, the strategies used by many of the automakers is very, very similar. Uh, as we talked about in that video, uh, monitoring the crankshaft speed, looking for fluctuations. So a lot of the diagnostic processes that you can use are very similar between makes there. Not so with EVAP emission systems. Now I want to start off by saying that when you're dealing with an EVAP emissions code, it becomes even that much more important for you to do your homework first. What I mean is you want to make sure that you read up on how the system operates, how that code is set in detail for the particular car that you're working on today. Uh, manufacturers use a lot of different means for diagnosing EVAP emission systems, and so your approach to dealing with those is going to vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, even model to model. Do your homework first, you'll save yourself a lot of time. Okay, let's start with the code definition on this Ford first. The P0455 on this model stands for No Purge Flow Detected, and it's tested when the ECM closes the vent solenoid, opens the canister purge solenoid, allowing vacuum to build in the system. Of course, now the fuel tank pressure sensor should see that vacuum develop. If it doesn't, and it doesn't report a signal to the ECM, the ECM assumes that either the fuel tank pressure sensor has failed, there's no purge flow being uh, received through the system and no vacuum being applied, or there's a really big leak somewhere. Okay, I'm gonna admit I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. I'm gonna start off by checking the integrity of the system, but I'm gonna do it downstream of the canister purge solenoid. Uh, if you have a, a good aftermarket scan tool that allows for enhanced uh, uh, bi-directional controls, you know, then you can manually open and close the solenoids as you want and watch the PID data and so forth. But, you know, a lot of us aren't so lucky. A lot of us have to deal with uh, standard uh, global OBD2 stuff. And if you didn't know about it, there is some help in mode eight on global OBD2. That's going to allow me to close the vent solenoid. And I'm gonna use the uh, smoke whistler tool I've got here today to uh, pressurize the system and monitor the pressure, the rate of decay, uh, and do it all in one shot. Um, if there is a problem, if there's a leak somewhere, I'm going to know it pretty quick. And uh, if there's no leak, well, that limits me real quick to the line going to the canister purge solenoid or the purge solenoid itself, right? So let's go ahead and set that up and uh, we'll close off the vent solenoid using mode 8 and we'll pressurize the system, see what happens. Okay, I got the scan tool set up here. We'll get down here to mode 8. Select mode 8. Okay, the uh, command has been accepted. Now the vent solenoid is closed. Uh, I have this attached to the line leading back to the rest of the system from the canister, from the, what would be the output side of the canister purge. Um, got our flow set all the way up. Notice here where we're starting off when we start the pump, the ball here is all the way at the very top, already starting to drop. Here's the indicator for the 40 thousandths or large leak standard. If the gross leak does indeed exist, it shouldn't even reach that point, but it's still going down. That's a really good sign. The gauge here is measured in inches of water. That's a whole lot less than inches of mercury. So these systems are not tested using a whole lot of pressure or vacuum. Okay, that ball's making it almost all the way to the bottom there. And there it is, it's all the way in the bottom. So that's a very good sign. Little hiccup there, that's not unusual. Now we're just going to let that sit. Of 
course, now I am adding smoke at the same time here. So there's an obvious leak. I just might see that, but right now I don't suspect there is. Down to about 15 inches of water on the pressure gauge. And this will go for like five minutes. Uh, at least the pump will run for five minutes. I don't need it to run that long. All right. Then I can reach over here once I've got the system pressurized. Again, I don't suspect there's any leaks. I'm certainly not pumping it enough to overcome a large leak. So I'm going to shut the flow off. And I'm going to watch the gauge. Uh, if I recall the specifications correctly, I think the ECM monitors this for two minutes looking for vacuum decay. In this case, it would be pressure decay. So far, the ball's staying at the bottom. Pressure gauge hasn't changed. And considering the definition of the code, no purge flow, if it was a leak causing that no purge flow, I think the signs here are pretty good saying that there isn't a leak. You think we got this thing figured out yet? I think we're pretty close. The P0455 can only be caused by three things. Number one, there's a gross leak in the system. Well, we've shown that's not the case because we built pressure to 15 inches of water and we built it easily and it stayed there. If there was a gross leak somewhere, doubtful we would have gotten to that full pressure and certainly doubtful it would have stayed. The other thing it could be is the fuel tank pressure sensor, but once again, not the case here because we watched that pressure change. When we apply pressure to the system, the fuel tank pressure sensor voltage change, that sensor's working. That only leaves the vapor management valve or the canister purge solenoid, however you want to refer to it as. Uh, it's a simple electrical solenoid. It's uh, normally closed. So when the ground is completed by the ECM, the solenoid opens and that allows the vacuum from the engine, of course, to purge the uh, fuel vapors from the canister. Uh, very easy for us to check. I'm just gonna reach down in here with my power probe and get onto that ground connector. And when I apply it, I'm gonna listen for a click and also get feel for it while I got my finger on there. Okay, ground applied, nothing. Ground applied, nothing. I think that's told me all about I need to know now. I think it's down to the forge shop to get a new vapor management valve and then get a for sale sign on this beast. Thanks for watching.